Losing your merch per Amazon account due to trademark violations is one of the scariest parts of being a print-on-demand seller. And the worst part is that understanding trademarks and copyrights can be very confusing sometimes, especially if you're just starting out. However, the good news is that by the end of this video, I will have hopefully lifted a lot of the fog around trademarks and copyright for you, and you will have the tools and resources to keep your account safe and avoid trademark violations. I'll also show you different examples of me doing trademark checks on Merch for Amazon and what to do in different scenarios. And just before we start, it's important to note that I'm not a legal expert and this is not legal advice. I'm literally just a graphic designer and a print on demand seller who's giving you some tips that I've learned over the past three years to make your life easier. So first of all, we need to understand what copyright and trademarks actually mean. And I'll start off with copyrights. I'll try to explain it in simple terms. Basically, if you're the creator of original work, then you automatically get copyright protection for that said work. An example would be if you create a t-shirt design that's your own, you've created it yourself, designed it yourself, then other people are not allowed to copy this without your permission. And this doesn't just apply to t-shirt designs, it could also be things like music, educational content, video games. So that also means for you, if you're doing research and you're looking at t-shirt designs from other people, you can't just go ahead and copy these one-to-one. -one. And I'll throw up an example on screen right now where a top selling design on Merch for Amazon has been copied by someone else it's not one-to-one -one exactly pixel by pixel the same, but it's so damn close that this would be copyright infringement. What you are allowed to do is you can take inspiration from other people's designs and come up with similar designs. I'll once again show an example of this, of how you might approach taking inspiration from someone else's work and maybe using the same phrase or, well, a similar layout, but still creating your own design, not a copy of the original work. So how do you avoid copyright infringement? And the easiest way would just be to create your own original work, then you're not copying anyone, don't use anyone's designs as an example to copy one to one, just start yourself with your own ideas. The other options would be to use either public domain graphics that you can use commercially and well, you don't have to alter them and you wouldn't be copying anyone because the rights to them have been given up or you're using licensed graphics like you find on Vexels, Creative Fabrica. Uh, if you pay for these, you have the right to use them as they are or modified. The creator is not going to claim copyright on this because you've paid to use these files. And if you want to find out further information about copyrights, I'll leave a link in the description that'll lead you to a Google support site that shows where copyright applies and and also how to report copyright infringement and much more in-depth detail. So now that I've covered the copyright side of things, I'm going to explain to you more about trademarks. The two are definitely not the same, even though people might often interchangeably use the words and say, well, this phrase is copyrighted when really they mean it is trademarked. So a trademark is typically either a logo or a phrase that's been registered with an official trademark registry. These exist usually for different countries. So there's one for America, there's one for the United Kingdom, and there's also an overarching one for the European Union. Getting a trademark doesn't happen automatically like copyright, but you have to actually file a trademark registration, which costs money and it can take up to a year or even longer to register this. What's quite important to note is there's different types of trademarks out there and there's a website called TM Hunt or Trademark Hunt that explains these further. So first of all, we've got the text trademark. This is, in my opinion, the most powerful one. It is a type of trademark where there's no particular claim to font style, size, or color, meaning you're not allowed to use this trademark regardless of the form it appears in. A good example would be just do it. You can copy this phrase whatsoever in any form. Next up, we've got designs, which is usually a drawing, illustration, or a design. And the registration in this case protects the exact design which you're not allowed to duplicate kind of like copyright but it's a bit stronger because it's actually registered and lastly there's the typeset trademark this one is without the standard character claim it basically means that the phrase is trademarked however in a certain way so 
If you don't copy this specific way, then you should be fine to use the word or the words yourself. The way I understand it, if say, for example, someone has registered a typeset trademark for milk and it is a certain type of font, because it symbolizes their company logo. But what they didn't want is for no one to ever be able to use milk on a t-shirt, just in a random common phrase. So you should be able to use this still if you're not copying that specific brand and trying to deceive people into buying the brand's products by obviously copying their style. Is it a risky thing to upload to Merch by Amazon if there's a types of trademark out there? I would say yes, it's still risky, but generally I don't think you get rejection for these types, so it's up to you to decide how risky you find this category. Another thing that's important to note is that there's different classes of trademarks out there, meaning if someone wants to trademark a phrase for t-shirts, then they would file it for the class 25. However, if you wanted the same phrase to be trademarked for the use on posters or pillowcases, for example, then you would have to file again for class 20. So as you can see there, just because something is trademarked doesn't mean it applies to you and your products that you're selling. What you have to look out for is the classes that the trademark applies to because it might mean you can sell this design on t-shirts but not in fact on pillowcases. So how do you avoid trademark infringement then? So the good news is there's some free tools out there that can massively help you tackle this problem. And you don't need to pay anything to get premium tools to be safer. The free ones are actually really good. The first tool you're going to want to get is called Merch by Amazon Trademark Protection. It's a free browser extension by Merch Informer and I will leave a link to it down below in the description. So this browser extension is going to be very useful for our niche research process because you get these extra buttons up here to check for trademarks on live listings on Amazon. Let's say you found this shirt and you're thinking about entering this niche, then you can hit this trademark check button up here and it will quickly highlight all of the potentially trademarked words in this listing. And obviously, Stranger Things is trademarked. Shout out to everyone watching this at the moment on Netflix. I'm loving it myself and I can't wait to see the finale. Anyway, if you click on this red word right here, it will bring up all of the words within this listing that are trademarked. It will show you the type of trademark, the status, meaning whether it's live or dead. And you can also click the serial number of each trademark and it will open the entry on the USPTO database. This is the official American registry for trademarks and holds further information telling you whether you can sell this sort of phrase or not. And the way to find this out is, well, first of all, you can see when this was published. If it's live, it will have this green indication right here. And if you open the goods and services tab, it will also tell you which products are trademarked. So in this case, t-shirts is right here, first one. So obviously you can sell this on t-shirts. So the next browser extension that you'll definitely want to get is called Producta for Merch by Amazon. This tool is once again free and it has a lot of very useful functions that can save you a lot of time. But today we'll focus on the trademark part of it. And once again, there will be a link to it down below. So the reason why Producta is so useful is because it gives you these trademark check buttons while you're actually uploading to Merch by Amazon and entering your details. You can get Merch Informer's trademark check buttons too, but I think you need to have a subscription for that. They only display on the actual Amazon product pages with the free version. However, Producta definitely solves that problem for us because you can use their buttons for the US and the European trademark registries. So let's say I want to check these words right here. Let's hit the USPTO button and see what it comes up with. So it's highlighted Tractor and July. And if you click on these, once again, you get a list of different trademarks. Two of them are live, one of them is pending. Pending one basically means that there has been a file for a trademark, but it's not gone live just yet. So let's look further into these because just because they're live doesn't mean that they apply to us every time. And this is quite important because let's say you click on this serial number for Tractor. It will once again bring up the entry on USPTO. You can see it's been live since 2010, but if you click onto Goods and Services, you can quickly see that this applies to women's, girls, and infant clothing. And then it specifies different types of clothing over here that are all covered by this trademark. So. What you can learn from this is that not every trademark actually applies to every gender because 
you can technically still sell clothing that says tractor on it or you can use the word tractor in your listings if you're only selling the shirts for men so in this case you should in theory be able to upload this and i've uploaded tractor designs myself i've tested it if you actually untick the boxes for women and youth and only upload to men's products so you'd also have to ignore the v-neck t-shirt for example and yeah so that's one example of a trademark that appears to be live and applying to you but doesn't fully cover all the t-shirts that you might be selling next up we've got july so this is obviously a massive trend right now fourth of july and you might be wondering what's the deal with this trademark for july so this one is live registered last year and it's for class 25 which as i mentioned is clothing so if we open this up once again opening the goods and services tab you can see right here this is trademarked for wetsuits for surfing bodyboarding windsurfing and other surface water sports since none of the products we're selling on merch for amazon or generally on printed demand are wetsuits this trademark is completely fine as of now this only applies to wetsuits so the 4th of july keywords are definitely safe to use for t-shirts or clothing on the american marketplaces unless you sell wetsuits another example of a trademark you might come across sometimes is this type right here it gets flagged up by a trademark check and when you actually open the entry you get this red symbol meaning this is dead and has been cancelled and you also see the date cancelled right here. Since 2020, this trademark for the word best isn't active anymore. It used to only apply to footwear, but you do often find these sort of words that used to be trademarked on t-shirts, but the trademark's been cancelled, so it's now safe to sell in that niche or for this specific keyword. That's definitely also worth noting. Some trademarks still show up in trademark checks, however, they aren't even live. Another thing to note about Producta is if you scroll all the way up, you can actually enter the settings tab, scroll down to this section right here, which is the trademark check classes, and you can tick different classes for trademarks which is what I explained earlier. So 25 is clothing, but if you wanted to only upload to pop sockets for some reason, you could take that box right there. Or if you're generally uploading to all sorts of products, then just enable all of them to make sure you definitely don't infringe on any trademarks. And you also have the separate DPMA. I think that's the German trademark registry and the European one. Now, another thing you might wonder is how do I search for trademarks for the European marketplaces or for the UK, for example? And I'll give you that example now. I've typed in mother right here in the feature bullet, and I'm just going to hit the European trademark check, which will flag this word up. And you can see two entries right here. This one application opposed. I'm not actually certain what that status means, but I don't think it means it's live. However, this one right here is showing it's live, mother class 25. And sometimes when you click on these, you don't really get any information. It says there was a problem retrieving your details. So in that case, what I'd recommend you do is come to this website right here. It's the Intellectual Property Office for the UK. I will leave a link to that down below. And obviously if you're looking for German trademarks, you would have to go to their specific registry of trademarks. And what you want to do here is copy and paste your word into the search words box. Then you can change the search type from similar to exact. And the classification down here is quite important. If if you're only uploading to t-shirts and other clothing then type in class 25 or select it from the drop down and then you can hit search all the way at the bottom and now we'll bring up the entries for mother so you get these two which are design trademarks showing with an image right here of what design you can copy and then at the bottom there's an actual one without a design showing so this is probably a text trademark and it's registered since 2010 so let's click on it it opens up if we tap the class 25 box right here it will show us which actual products the trademark applies to and shirts is right at the start here so i wouldn't move into this or i wouldn't use this keyword if you're uploading to the united kingdom's marketplace or merch for amazon because it appears to be trademarked in the uk another very useful feature that i recently found out about on producta is in the settings up here and if you scroll down to the trademark section again there is a little tick box right here which uh, i think by default was disabled for me and what it does is it rechecks your existing products 
around every five days for new trademarks because new trademarks are being registered every day. Basically, if you enable this, get a, a little notification up here for newly registered trademarks that appear in your listing data. And then you can go through and make sure that your old listings are still safe from trademarks and potentially either change the information or just delete the listings entirely. What's definitely important to note is the Merge by Amazon algorithm that decides whether you have a trademark in your upload is not perfect. Meaning sometimes you will upload a design or people will upload designs and they'll have trademark words in the listing and it will not get rejected. And other times you might upload something which is completely clear from trademarks, you've done all your research and your listing is definitely fine. However, you still get a rejection. The good news is actually that sometimes if you get a rejection for trademark violations and you're certain that the trademark has, for example, been canceled recently, which has happened to me before, then you can email Amazon's or Merge by Amazon's support team and you can tell them, look, got a rejection. I think it may be because of this trademark and I looked into it. It has been canceled recently. I believe the rejection was just a mistake on your end. Could you please investigate this further? And if you do this and you're actually right, then you can get the rejection taken back from Merge for Amazon. It worked for me in the past. They said, sorry, this was a mistake on our end. The rejection doesn't count against your account. Then they also allow future submissions of that said phrase or trademark because it was canceled anyway. So one thing you might wonder as a beginner is, can I use trademarks in my title and description if they're not on the actual t-shirt design? And the answer to this is simply no. If it's trademarked for the use on t-shirts, that also includes the actual description or tags associated with that t-shirt. Any trademark words, leave them out of your listings. And one more tip that I definitely wanted to give to you if you're uploading to Merge by Amazon is if you want to make your life easier, because researching trademarks is really boring and time consuming, only upload to clothing. So all the things that are included in class 25, upload to those, but just ignore pop sockets, pillowcases, uh, phone cases, those sort of products, because most of the time t-shirts sell the most. It's hard to find top selling designs in uh, sort of the pillowcase or pop socket section anyway. So make your life easier. Only upload to t-shirts, hoodies, that sort of stuff. And you will only have one class of trademarks to research, which will save you a lot of time and your sales will probably not differ that much anyway. That's my personal strategy. You don't have to use it but I wanted to share it with you anyway. So I hope you enjoyed this video and this helps you keep your accounts safe. And if you're someone who's stuck in tier 10 on Merch by Amazon, or you're just generally wondering how to tier up faster, then I suggest you watch this video next, where I show you plenty of tips and strategies that you can use to get out of the lower tiers quicker.